Salford has a problem, a massive problem with dementia, which can't carry on. This is the story of three extraordinary people who are taking on the problem in their own unique way. Music, dance and swimming is helping those with dementia to help slow down the process of dementia. If we can improve society for people with dementia, we improve it for everyone. You're not only raising awareness of dementia, you're creating fabulous, fabulous memories for families, which I think is wonderful. Here at the Salford Institute of Dementia, professors have been researching and considering how music is helping people unlock the brain for those with dementia. The Institute was originally emerged from the passion of the professors to help engage people who are suffering with dementia to get them out into the community and live a fulfilling life. Professor Chris Poyner has been working with the Institute for over seven months. He's been working very closely with the local people of Salford. Your identity is challenged because you might lose your job, you might not be able to drive anymore. Uh, and this new kind of negative label, because dementia is quite a stigmatised condition, can be quite overpowering. So what we're trying to do is get people in and say, OK, so you have dementia, now how can we help you take control of that? His research focuses on improving the lives of people with dementia, both in the care setting and within the wider community. It's about improving public understanding through research, it's about improving people's lives through research, so that you're actually enabling and empowering people with dementia to go out into the community, be, be uh, active in the community, and just by being there and being well uh, in public uh, and being quite visible, you can challenge a lot of negative stereotypes and assumptions about dementia. With the help of the Institute, people from the area can attend sessions of music. These sessions help trigger back memories and stimulate the brain. There's one person in particular who is involved in a number of our groups uh, with dementia, but he, he's not really engaged that often. And it's hard to really notice a tangible improvement in his well-being in other sessions, but in this particular one, you know, it'll, it'll, he's been really always as well, but it'll come alive and he'll start tapping his feet and like, you know, clicking his fingers and smiling and commenting on the, uh, on the performance and saying well done and bravo and encore and all these different things. Whereas usually it'll be extremely passive, um, not communicate particularly well at all. And I mean, after this one music session in particular that I'm thinking of, he actually uh, got really involved in a reminiscence session that we did afterwards and started talking about uh, where he's from and his local area and did the work that he used to do. And all this has come, I believe, from um, that real kind of active mental stimulation that he, he, he kind of received from the music performance and being, being in the hub and everything else. However, for the past two years, two women from Salford have helped make a movement for dementia. They are the new dementia heroes to the local people. Siobhan Maguire has been working closely with the people of Salford for the past 13 years. Siobhan has helped people with mental and physical illnesses get back into the pool. I definitely think it's about building the trust with the customers first. So I always go to them first, introduce myself and build that bond and start to break down the barriers. Like Chris, Siobhan sees swimming sessions as an opportunity to re-establish that social connection that may have been lost. It's a great social class aqua relax because they come down, they're starting to make friends in the pool who are like-minded to them as well, who maybe haven't got that support from social groups outside. And then they come down, they have the swim, they become friends, and then afterwards they all meet in a coffee shop for a brew and an atta, and it's really what's left. The biggest task was breaking down the barrier for her customers. Gearing them up to get that, yeah, I can do this, I can do that. It doesn't matter if I've got a long-term illness. I can come swimming, the help is there. So I just think getting, letting them get to know me and breaking the barriers down between myself and the group and then that trust builds for them to come down in society.
Leslie Fisher is a big figure within the Swinton area. She has helped care for her sister for the past four years and figured out that there isn't a lot out there for people with dementia. So she decided to set up a group called Dancing with Dementia. This has helped Leslie talk to many more people who are also caring for loved ones. Isolation, loneliness and depression, contributory factors to a lot of um, illnesses and conditions that are challenging uh, the local people. So I thought, well, if we can eliminate some of those, eliminate some of the depression, eliminate some of the I isolation, then we're on a winner. Through Chrissy's research, Leslie has found it incredible how music and dance help stimulate the brain and help slow down the process of dementia through music. When I'd done a little bit of reading about dementia, it said that dancing was the better form of exercise because it's not only just physical stimulus, it's mental stimulus as well. Social activity. So again, with, with ticking those boxes, isolation, loneliness and depression, it was, it was a win-win situation. So I thought, right, we'll start dancing with dementia, the venue that people used to meet at. Then we've got the music, then we've got the dance, then we've got the laughing, because it's a good job some people have only got two feet, because if they were centipedes, they'd be lost. They can't, you know, they can only just cope with two feet. So, giggling about getting the steps wrong, giggling about getting the words wrong, having a nice drink, having a piece of cake, a wonderful social event. Leslie's first session of Dancing with Dementia had 24 people attending. What she didn't realise was that those 24 people were health petitioners. Who were coming to, to size the joint up in doing health and safety risks and things like that. Looking back on the first official grand opening of Dancing with Dementia, Leslie was worried and couldn't sleep the night before. She was full of nerves. And when I woke up in the morning, it was blowing, it was snowing, it was dreadful. And I thought, nobody is going to come out in this weather. And the people just kept coming in and coming in and coming in. And then I was flapping that I didn't have enough chairs out. Had we got enough cups and saucers? And it was a relief that so many people had came on, come along. And I thought, you know, if this many people have turned up, it is needed. Dementia is a growing challenge, and until more inspiring people come along and help those with dementia, we will start hitting a nationwide crisis. If things don't change by 2025, over one million people will be diagnosed with dementia.